Afternoon YouTube, it's your boy Leon to be cool. Welcome to my channel. Like this video if you like it, subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. If you are, thank you. And thank you for clicking on this video. I'm about to do a review on season three of The Magicians. Like this show got me from season one, episode one. It was an amazing idea. It was like a modernized American version of Hogwarts, but darker. Like it, it, it gets dark, yo. They involve gods, fairies, all uh, these type of things. If you haven't watched it, I advise you to watch it. To people who have watched it, let's get right into it. I'm going to talk about the cast first. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Quentin first. Quentin. Q, Q. That's what they call him. Q in the movie. He, he was just... A sight to behold the season like he was be like following his destiny more than he did in the previous seasons you know he was he was still fascinated by Fillory and all these other stuff but he was accepting destiny for what it is you know he knew he had a bigger purpose even if it wasn't to ultimately be happy at the end he was willing to be the savior of the world and we, had, we also got to see him as the beast for like an episode like that was trippy i really enjoyed seeing him portray the bad guy for once he also when he had that moment where he touched the key that shows you your worst self where you basically got a glimmer of all his regrets from season one to now and it was crazy all the things that that key says to you and that other dude didn't even last long he just touched the key for a few and just jumped off got eaten by that dragon that that water dragon and i'm just gonna dive into julia julia becoming a goddess was something else yo i mean like she was kind of like our only tether to magic for most of the season she was the only one who could do spells and all that. She was the one who kind of was the first person we saw use the fairy dust, the snort cocaine dust of the fairies and use magic with it. And we saw, didn't she just like miss the finger tatting, you know? If, if, you were if you were in the dancing days, you know what I'm talking about. The finger tatting was lit. What are the... The, the appealing things about the show let's jump into Elliot him being the king that he is like last season we saw him basically give up everything to to save the world he was one of the first people to do that in the whole main cast main characters let me put it that way I'm gonna say cast main characters and you saw his life shamble a lot sees stumble as they try to bring magic back as he tries to rule but you know be bad at it also be controlled by the fairies him and uh margo they were just having a hell of a time with those fairies that episode with um uh quinn quentin i mean and Elliot, where they grew old together, had a kid, died. That was just something else, yo. I did not expect it to go that way. And when they got back to Fillory, they started remembering it. Dang. Like, I wonder why they didn't look for their kid. Maybe they just accepted it. It's just a different timeline. Like, it's not real or stuff like that. It was a trippy moment. And the fact that a creature is inside of Elliot at the end, yo. That, that was crazy. Then we got Penny. We got two pennies this season. The OG Penny from this timeline, of the show's timeline, who decided to stay at the library and be follow his destiny too, like Quentin, and be something greater, and you know, follow his destiny to the fullest. Like that was a big decision from from his part, yo, yeah, because he basically gave up Katie. Uh, KD also had a hell of a time this season, yo. She went from trying to save Penny to being in a 
a mental hospital to break you down to being the amazing singer she was in the musical episode than to basically be mad that there's a Penny but Penny loves Julia and it was just a whole lot of trippy stuff. If you haven't watched the show you should really get to it. Like it's a mind fuck and in a good way. You know sometimes mind fucks are good. What can I say? <laughs> Let me just jump into Margo. Margo the I one eye queen. She also had to go through some lot of ish. That dude was savage, or dude who decapitated his brothers just to marry her. I mean, like, she is gorgeous, but that was too much. I mean, like, even with her now, she just thought the room, you know. Her character's amazing. Her character growth is also something. The fact that she is now the ruling queen of uh, Fillory is something else also that I didn't see coming because the whole episode, they were campaigning. It was Trick and Elliot. It's trick no tick at Elliot just going at it campaign wise lying manipulating doing this and it, then she takes the thing and she deserved it like she really deserved it it was really nice to see that um then we're gonna dump jump into Alice Alice has never been the same since she became that celestial being and thing and now she's human again and Life has just been non like not satisfactory at all for her. She did some weird decisions. Why does everybody kind of like sign off their way, like their life away from the li like to the library? Like a lot of them did that sacrifice. Like, why was it something to really do? Like they really did that a lot. Like a lot of people just found themselves. So Penny and Hades. Hades being the black motherfucker with the best nappy hair I've ever seen in my life, you know, since Donald Lover. Then let's talk about Finn. Finn was weird when she was talking to the wood and imagining as a baby that they got tricked that an uh, older girl was their baby and she was confused on how she couldn't tell. There was a lot of things that happened this season, like it was just crazy season and it was surrounded by the quest of the seven keys you know key one seemed like a more simpler quest key two also key three key three and four i feel like were harder to get five the musical one was just I feel like it was a filler episode at work. Six and seven were also things that took longer because the, the, um, the fairies had the six key and they weren't willing to give it up. Also, Allison's moment where she kind of like sabotaged the whole mission at the end, getting them all caught, making them all lose their memory was just another twist. Ah, they were in good place on us. If you haven't watched Good Place, you know that like, they they thought they were in a good place, but they ended up being in the bad. And season two, basically, they restarted all their hate memories, so we had to watch the same characters find themselves again. I hope they don't do it the whole season, cause it took them the whole season to bring magic back, and now it has to be like delegated. Like you have to file report after report to get more magic from your department for your people, which was trippy. Like. Yo, like this show is exploring some interesting thing. Also Josh, for instance, he's a really interesting addition to the cast. Out of all, I give this season a 9 out of 10. I really enjoyed it because I think I thought I, I wouldn't because there's magicians without magic, but they found a way to make it compelling enough and interesting enough. That's why I give them that extra boost to put them on 9. I'm excited for the next season. I hope it gets renewed. It should get renewed. So many unanswered questions, so uh deuces subscribe if not subscribe, like if you like my video, you know what I'm saying? And uh yeah.